Welcome to another edition of Jana Brock's Bunny Talks. I'm Jana. In this episode, we'll take a talk a little bit about rabbit habits, uh, body language of rabbits, rabbit behaviors, and basically all the funny and unique little things that rabbits do, and also why they do them. But first, if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button on this Love Your Rabbit YouTube channel. We are in the process of moving our information and videos over to this YouTube channel. Our loveyourrabbit.com website is well established and has been around for many years, but this YouTube channel is new for us. So please help us build it and be able to keep bringing you these important episodes and topics. So back to rabbit habits, behaviors, and the body language. They are very important to learn about and also to respect. Whenever an animal does a particular thing with its tail or ears or body in general, he's saying something, he or she. Either he is content or annoyed, your rabbit could need something from you. Uh, he could be in pain or he could be uncomfortable. Or he might just be playing. There are so many rabbit behaviors in different forms of body language that it would be difficult to talk about all of them in one single video. But let's talk about a few of the more common. One important thing to note is that domesticated rabbits have been genetically altered from the original species of wild rabbits. If you trace the lineage of your pet rabbit back to its origin, you will see that domesticated rabbits have 22 pairs of chromosomes and wild rabbits, such as a cottontail, have 21. Even though your rabbit has been you know, bred specifically to be a pet, its base nature is still intact. That's very important to realize. Digging and chewing are natural behaviors for rabbits. Don't try and change the base nature of your pet rabbit. If these behaviors are not something you can deal with, then a pet rabbit is not gonna be a good choice for you or your family. That being said, rabbit experts, shelter workers, responsible owners, and caretakers all over the world do a really excellent job accommodating the basic nature of, of pet rabbits. They provide safe chew toys, hardwoods, and build indoor dig boxes. We have a great article on loveyourrabbit.com about indoor dig boxes. Even better, in, our book, in my book, Bunny Conversations, The Entertaining Dialogue of Pet Rabbits by Jana Brock. That's available on Amazon all across the world that has a to Z information about rabbits. It's also fun and entertaining. Uh, even people who don't have pet rabbits love that book. So back to the topic at hand, Ra rabbit body language is important. For example, um, if you let a bunny out of his car crate after returning home from the veterinarian, you can see a very common thing that rabbits do. He will probably hop away from you, kicking his back feet outward up into the air as he, as he moves away from you. This is a normal rabbit behavior. He's just letting you know that he didn't much enjoy the car ride. He probably didn't like the veterinarian experience and he hated being stuck in his carrier. That kind of rabbit behavior or rabbit body language is not cause for concern. Rabbits do that all the time. But some rabbit behaviors are cause for concern. If you, for example, see your rabbit shaking his head a lot or scratching his ears a lot, it could mean that he has an ear infection or, or ear mites. This might cause him discomfort or it might be very painful. Either way, that's a behavior you want to address. He will need his ears examined and likely some kind of ear treatment. Why? Because early detection and treatment of ear problems can save your rabbit from permanent damage such as head tilt or hearing loss. That is, that is an example of how important it is to know rabbit body language and the actions, you know, the little things they do, and also knowing your rabbit and what's common for him or her. Another example is if you happen to notice your rabbit grinding his teeth loudly. This is typically an indication of pain. Softly grinding the teeth is different. That's done when a rabbit is content. Uh, we call that purring, such as when you pet your rabbit's head, you, he might uh, grind his teeth very softly. That's, that's appropriate. That's common. But grinding his teeth loudly in a way that he doesn't usually do that, that's cause for concern. So this is a different type of teeth grinding than contentment. Uh, hard teeth grinding means he's hurting. And so that's something you need, need to take action on. If your rabbit does not usually grind his teeth at all when you pet him, but you notice he started grinding his teeth plus displaying other behaviors such as pressing his stomach to the floor, pulling his hind legs up underneath him and holding it there tight to the floor, or staying in a corner of his enclosure all hunched up, then there might be a problem. And probably there is a problem. Um, again, that's cause for concern and something you need to take action on. Also, rabbits that are in pain or sick will usually stop playing, their activity level will decrease and they will just, you know, kind of sit alone in a corner or try to hide even from you. So that's just a natural defense for rabbits since they are prey animals in nature. 
Uh, they are also among the quietest animals on the planet, so understanding their body language and their daily habits is a must for all rabbit owners. If you're not very experienced with rabbit care and you feel like your rabbit has been injured or sick or might be injured or sick, just call your veterinarian. Take them in just to be safe. Even experienced rabbit caretakers take their pets to the vets you know, when necessary, and, and many of us can treat a lot of the things at home that other rabbit owners might not feel comfortable treating. But when it's time to take your pet to the vet and it, and it goes out of your area of expertise or experience or your rabbit really does need to see a vet, take him in. It's always best to be safe. Rabbits in pain uh, often refuse to eat or drink. They won't poop normally. Um, their habits slow down. They just There's a change in behavior. And you'll know that if you've been watching. Uh, once a rabbit stops eating and drinking, a series of cascading health events can occur. And those health events happen very quickly. So this includes a condition called gastrointestinal stasis, or we call it GI stasis. GI stasis is when the gut slows down or stops working altogether. It is a quick, silent killer of rabbits. Many rabbit ex experts deal with GI stasis at home, and they know exactly what to do in case this occurs, because we deal with it over and over and over and over. We have a lot of rabbits and work with rescues, and we do a lot of bunny sitting. But some rabbit owners, most rabbit owners, don't know how to deal with that. And it's, uh, if you see that happening, take your rabbit to the vet. Just take him in. Don't try to guess your way through it. Um, rabbits are lost very quickly to GI stasis. It is important to watch uh, your rabbit's waste or the little poops every day, uh, morning and night. If changes in pooping occurs, you're going to know it. If you're not watching and you're not familiar with his habits, you won't know it. Rabbits should poop between 300 and 500 of those little round pellets every single day. So if he stops pooping or it becomes very scant or you can't find very many poops, there's a problem. Call your veterinarian. A rabbit's health can decline in a matter of hours. Doing proper research about best care practices for your rabbit is helpful, but you also need to be very familiar with your pet and the way he or she normally behaves. Exceptions always, always, always exist with not only with rabbits, but with other animals. That's the same is true of humans. Not everybody behaves the same way. Not everybody's communication style is the same, you know, and, and that's the same for animals. We can, we can find the commonalities and learn about a lot about their behavior in a common sense but you know every little animal is is different in some way so get to know your particular animal that way if your rabbit is in pain or sick or exper experiencing gut problems you'll know it early enough to take action and avoid uh, serious health consequences and even death Although it's a different huge topic altogether, it's best to find a rabbit savvy veterinarian. That is somebody who has a rabbit specialty on top of exotic pet specialty. Uh, a lot of new rabbit owners don't understand that exotic pet specialty lumps rabbits in with all the other exotic pets, but there is a rabbit specialty that a veterinarian can go get continuing education on after, on top of, you know, in addition to the exotic pet specialty. It's also important that they have experience with rabbits. There are still veterinarians all over the United States and, and I'm sure outside of the country that will pick up a rabbit by its ears or its haunches, you know, the loose skin on its back or, or something like that and they don't see anything wrong with it because of historic misunderstandings and historic teachings that we now know to be very cruel. And so don't think that just because somebody is a veterinarian and they have an exotic spe pet specialty that they have any experience or expertise with rabbits whatsoever. There's still a lot of misunderstandings. That is improving the more pet rabbits become common. But right now, rabbit specialty is not comprehensive enough in, in veterinary schools, at least here in the United States. I have written a great section about choosing a veterinarian and what you need to know about veterinarians specific to pet rabbits in my book, Bunny Conversations, The Entertaining, the Entertaining Dialogue of Pet Rabbits. And that is available, it's by Jana Brock, it's available on Amazon and many other book outlets all around the world. So get a copy of that, that has A to Z, what to know about pet rabbits, and it's also fun and entertaining, even for people who don't have pet rabbits. Um, it's a great book, so check that out. So back to rabbit habits. Rabbits do funny things. Um, when they're content, they will do something called flopping or binking, loafing, grooming, laying down with front legs stretched outward and their back legs fully extended and back almost like they're flying through the air as a superhero. You know, um, they play, they run, they investigate things, they're curious and they stay active. Those are all content behaviors. 
Now, those behaviors are not always a sign of contentment. They can occur. Some of those behaviors can occur if they're not content, such as loafing. That is when a rabbit kind of tightens itself up and sort of lays like it's a big loaf of bread, you know, or a little loaf of bread. Uh, Rabbits will lay like that sometimes if they're having gut problems or if they're in pain and they'll just lay, you know, sit there and be very still in that position. One rabbit habit that can be confusing to new rabbit owners, a behavior that rabbits have, is the way they sleep. Rabbits typically sleep in an alert position, eyes wide open, and head in the air. This is because they are prey animals in nature, and they need to be ready if a predator comes up uh, upon them when they're sleeping, and so that they can get away quickly. So they remain in a posture of alert behavior, even though they are sleeping. And one way you can tell that a rabbit is sleeping is its nose will slow down and stop twitching, typically. When your rabbit gets more relaxed and comfortable in his environment, he may sleep in a more relaxed position, like on his side with his eyes closed after he flops down. Or he might stretch completely out on his stomach, front paws in front of him, and back legs stretch completely out. But a lot of rabbits, especially if they're they're new to you or if they're new in your home or they're in a new area, they're going to sleep in an alert position um, with their head up, their eyes open, and just kind of ready to bolt. Chinning and spraying are two behaviors which are known well to all rabbit owners, especially those of us who care for rescue rabbits or bunnies that have been abandoned by previous owners, um, simply because a lot of the rabbits that are rescued have not been treated responsibly. You know, the owners weren't responsible and they didn't spay or neuter them. They didn't, you know, aside from health problems, there are some reasons why some animals can't be spayed or neutered. We call that altering, alteration surgery. But most animals can, and it's to, to a, a great advantage that you do so. Um, but those rabbits, all, are, all rabbits have two scent glands. One is under the chin and one is in the anus area. The scent glands are used to mark territory and claim ownership. So chinning is done by rabbits that are altered or unaltered. Spraying is mostly done by unaltered rabbits, those that have not been spayed or neutered, and it diminishes greatly after the surgery takes place. A few weeks after alteration surgery takes place, a rabbit's hormones will calm down so that spraying uh, will diminish or stop for the most part. That said, a rabbit might still spray if another animal has been in the area, you know, something they consider their territory. Uh, this is true of does and bucks, both males and females do that. There's, there is information in some places that suggest that spraying is only done by bucks or male rabbits. That is not true. Males and females both spray. Chinning is when a rabbit tips its head back and touches an item with the underside of his chin. This deposits a small amount of the rabbit's scent onto the item, indicating that that item is now in his or her territory or it belongs to him. Unlike spraying, the scent that comes from a rabbit's chin is undetectable to humans. We typically can't see it or smell it. However, other rabbits can, and it is thought that other animals can too. Other types of animals. Humping is also a fairly fairly common rabbit behavior, uh, more so before alteration surgery occurs, but it does occur after alteration surgery too. Rabbits hump not only during mating, but to show dominance. They also grunt when they are trying to mate or wanting to mate. Humping behavior is greatly reduced after spay or neuter neuter surgery. Uh, However, when two or more rabbits are being bonded together, like I said before, you will see rabbits humping. And and that's just to establish dominance, to say, hey, I'm in charge. And uh, if you're thinking of bonding your rabbit and you're inexperienced with bonding, get somebody who knows what they're doing or do a lot of research and just be very careful as you're learning. That's a, as an aside, the bonding process can be very dangerous for the rabbits and for you if you don't know what you're doing. Anyway, uh, you will, you will even, even rabbits that don't have bonded partners before, especially before alteration surgery, um, we give them stuffed animals just so they'll have a little partner before they get spayed or neutered. And then we can bond them after they're all healed up from their surgery. But oftentimes you'll see them trying to dominate the uh, stuffed animal. They will, that humping behavior will, (laughs) I guess in their little lagomorph rabbit minds, they are telling the stuffed animal, Hey, I'm in charge here. So rabbits also nudge or do nose bumps. You know, they'll come up and nose bump things, bump their nose repeatedly against an item. This is typically a sign that they are exploring whatever that is. Uh, Rabbits are curious and check everything out. Some rabbits will nose bump their owners uh, when they want to be petted or just as they are hopping by. They will, you know, come up to you, lower their head and wait for you to pet them. That's also another calming behavior if your rabbit's comfortable with you. Rabbits often circle other rabbits 
Um, they'll circle other animals that they're bonded to or they're humans. Sometimes this is called the circle of love or love circling. And it has been noticed in mating behavior before animals are spayed or neutered. But it is also believed to be a sign of affection or admiration. So if your rabbit is circling you a lot, he might, he might just be telling you he, he loves you. Rabbits also do something called periscoping. And this is when they stand on their hind legs and look around. This is something referred to as the meerkat stance. Uh, inexperienced rabbit owners sometimes think the rabbit does this because they want to be held, and that is not true. Rabbits are ground animals, and they feel safest and secure with all four paws on the ground. In reality, a rabbit periscopes or gets on his hind legs and looks around just to get a better look at what's above ground level. They're curious about what is going on above their normal range of vision. And their their perception is quite limited because they, they are ground animals and they stay low to the ground. Periscoping or standing up on hind legs can also um, be noticed when a rabbit has been trained by a human to get treats. And so it's kind of like begging for a treat. So they'll go up on their hind legs when you're around them expecting that you're going you're gonna to bend down and give them a treat. Thumping is a very common rabbit behavior. It is done to warn other animals that danger is afoot. In nature, thumping can be detected by rabbits underground when, when the thumping rabbit is above ground. And also, uh, thumping is detected by other rabbits a fair distance away. So it is a natural defense and a warning system for rabbits. House rabbits will also thump when they are annoyed, sick, in pain, or afraid. So if there is a loud, if there's something loud going on in the home or thunder and lightning outside or the, the TV is, is too loud, they're shouting in the home, something is as it should not be, the rabbits will start thumping and they might thump for quite a while. That's scary to them. It's upsetting to them. Rabbits smell everything around them. That's also another common rabbit habit or rabbit behavior. Since they're very curious animals, this is one way that they investigate their surroundings. In a new environment, a rabbit will creep around slowly, kind of bobbing his head back and forth. And this is a sign that they're carefully checking out the area. And then they're going to proceed with caution because rabbits are also cautious animals. Uh, your pet rabbit will shouldn't eat its normal poops, little round poops, the 300 to 500 he will deposit in a 24-hour period. However, rabbits do produce something called cecotropes or cecos for short. Cecotropes are dense, shiny, round clusters of very strong smelling poops that the rabbit deposits and then immediately eats. Cecotropes, they should not be produced more than once or twice a day. And generally humans don't see them because the rabbits are so discreet about eating them. If you read a little bit about the biology of a rabbit, you will find that without cecotrope consumption, a rabbit will die due to malnutrition. If you see a lot of sucotropes laying around that have not been consumed, that means the animal is either sick or is not being fed properly. So be careful with sucotrope consumption or sucotrope production. Uh, that is a normal rabbit behavior, a rabbit habit that should happen every day, but um, is something you need to watch and, and be familiar with. A rabbit that is boxing, lunging, or charging, or is being aggressive, in other ways is sending out a warning to another animal nearby or maybe you that he doesn't want you doing whatever you are doing. He doesn't like what's going on around him. A rabbit that is, and that also happens if they've been abused in their past, just like any animal, a rabbit will get defensive and, and try to protect itself through these various behaviors. A rabbit that is being aggressive might have his ears pinned back, though pinned back ears is not always a sign of aggression. You know, lop breeds such as Holland Lops don't pin their ears back, of course, because their ears are down. They're not able to do that. A Rex or a Flemish giant breed would pin his ears back if he were aggressive. So ears are not always the best indication of what, what's going on with the rabbit. But again, you'll know your own rabbit, so you'll know what behaviors to watch for and what those mean. Um, circling other rabbits, submissive positions, honking and panting are also things you might observe. Uh, although panting is not done like a dog would pant. Uh, panting is typically the nose twitching fast, like if they've been running across the yard. There is a thing going around the internet um, right here recently that a nose, the speed of nose twitching is some kind of indicator of the rabbit's happiness and that simply is not true. The nose twitches for all kinds of reasons. He is tired, he is sick or he's in pain. Um, you know, can speed speed up or slow down a nose twitching. If the animal is about to go to sleep, the nose will slow down twitching. So it is not, nose twitching speed is not any indicator of the rabbit's emotional health or the rabbit's mood. 
Remember that rabbits are typically quiet animals, but they do make little noises when they're grooming themselves or sometimes another rabbit. One thing no rabbit owner ever wants to hear is a scream. Rabbits scream when they are in immense pain or experiencing fear, typically during the dying process. A rabbit you know, might also make a loud noise if, it, if another rabbit bites or hurts them, but that's not the same as a scream. As I said in the beginning of this video, there are too many rabbit habits and behaviors to talk about in one single video, but you can get the gist of what the more common rabbit habits are and rabbit behaviors and, and start paying attention if you don't already to your bunny's behavior. I have a lot more information in the book Bunny Conversations, The Entertaining Dialogue of Pet Rabbits by Jana Brock, or you can visit our website at loveyourrabbit.com. Also, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Give our Facebook page a like and follow us on Instagram. All those things help us get credible, good researched information out by people who have hands-on experience caring for these animals 24 hours a day. Thank you so much for joining me on this important episode of Jana Brock's Bunny Talks. As always, be kind to animals and thank you for caring.